Now, um, the name of this message is called Coming Out of Egypt. Amen. Coming out of Egypt. Now, it's important you understand this message because uh, people are looking for solutions. And you know if you've been online, all people are saying, what's the solution? Everybody's doing the media, doing interviews. You got entertainers and celebrities and preachers and everybody's looking for solutions solutions and i really know they don't want a solution I, people say they want a solution but they don't want a solution for real because a real solution uh is hard for this generation to to get because they have to give up stuff and that's not what they really want to do uh we want a solution but continue turning up and we want a solution and continue doing what we want to do we want a solution and continue live how we want to live so we really don't want a solution. We just want to talk about it, fuss about it, vent, but not really have a true solution. Now, we have to get to the point to where we stop wanting just to talk. Okay, as you notice, if you go on social media, there's just too much talking. It's just too much back and forth. Black people say this, white people say this. Black people, it's so funny how we can see stuff, stuff so differently, how things are so obvious to one group that's not obvious to the next group, and all of that is by plan. Um, what I want to tell you today is everything that's going on is prophetic, and I want to show you where we're headed and what's coming. Say, what's coming? what's coming? The prophetic word is all about what's coming so that God's people can prepare the goal is to be prepared so nothing catches us off guard. That's why for the last five years, what have I been preaching? I told y'all racism would be it. And, and I had so much flack when, they was, when I started preaching this. And people told me it's not about race. It's not about color. It's not about white and black. Now, the whole country is totally divided. I'm talking about totally. I'm talking about I'm looking for the KKK. And I'm looking for the, I mean, I'm looking for war now. Civil war, literally because this is actually the spirit uh, that is on uh, this generation. It's the spirit of war. Everybody wants to take up arms, don't know what they're fighting for, just want to fight. And so uh, I want you to get this understanding today. Amen? Okay, go to the book of Exodus. Exodus. I believe what Satan is doing is he's causing us to become so frustrated with injustice. Listen to me because I'm a flow now. He's causing us to become frustrated with injustice, meaning you never get justice, that we begin to, um, we begin to prematurely use the wrong methods to get justice we are not a people that have to fight for ourselves this whole nation knows now the Indians got to fight for themselves and the Mexicans got to fight for themselves everybody got to fight for themselves but we are the only people that could not fight for ourselves and they could not destroy us the reason why we cannot come up completely is because we are full of the spirit of this nation. We are full of Egypt. When the children of Israel were in Egypt in, 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 in the times of Moses, they became familiar, say familiar, with Anubis and Osiris and Isis and Set and Horus. These are the gods of Egypt. They became familiar with the way the Egyptians worshipped their false gods. They marveled at the statues, the monuments, the idols. So much to the point that when they got so-called separated or freed from Egypt, they began to erect the same idols that they were watching worship 
in Egypt. So God cannot truly deliver us because we are so full of. So God has to do something to make us come out of Egypt. So we'll quit, so we'll give Egypt back their stuff. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now what that means is they adopted the dress of Egypt, the look of Egypt, the nature of Egypt, the sex of Egypt, the clothes of Egypt, the value system of Egypt, Egypt's politics. They was full of it to the point that they don't know, they didn't know who they were. Y'all talk back to me. So God has to raise up a people with a spirit that longs for his way. And as we begin to long for his way and walk in his way, we begin to point the way to those who are wanting to come out but don't know what to come out of or how to even come out of it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So when I was watching the news and of course there's another shooting and before you can get one shooting there's another shooting and before you can get one there's another it just, it just goes on and on and I've never seen such a lack of I don't even know what to call it concern I don't need, just how do you blame the dead man I don't I don't understand how we attack the man that was shot I don't that's a new one to me how do you attack a man that did nothing but got shot but he's the villain I saw how they the, the boy the man that got shot recently the one in Oklahoma how they took and went back the one that's car stopped in the street they went back and in his brother's past and went back and got his record as if his record has something to do with him getting shot that day. What do we go to jail for and serve time if, if it doesn't matter? I mean, when, when you do a crime and you go to jail and serve time, you served your time for that crime, meaning the crimes, are the, the, that, that's over with. But for some reason, in this, when it comes to black folk, we never seem to get over the transgression. They bring that right back up 20 years later as, do you know what you have done in 20 years? You know how much changing you've done in 20? Do you know where I was over 20 years ago? You would not recognize me today if I showed you a picture because I was lost. So, so me being who I am, if, they were, if something was to happen to me, they would go back 20 years ago and paint a picture to America that this is who he is, irregardless of who I am now. Because in order for this spirit of murder, I'm going to call it murder. I'm just going to call it murder. This total disregard of black lives to continue, they must paint us as criminals and the worst of the worst. Even when you find good black folk, they'll go and find a reason. He moved. He didn't comply. I said how that would work maybe for these young dudes, but... What about the dude in Florida that was laying on his back with his hands in the air, ain't doing nothing and got shot? You can't, after what, see, now listen. As we begin to go back in our repertoire or our, cat or our file and begin to look at Oscar Grant and, because these no, he's names you know now, uh, Philando Castile and Alton Sterling and, uh, what's the girl, Sandra Bland and Rakita Boyd, and I mean, you can, I don't know them all, but trust me, you can just go on and on. Uh, the new one, uh, the, the guy that got shot in the back on film, uh, it's so many of them now that you can just go on and on and on. As we begin to see the lack of justice 
there is a frustration that Satan is playing on to get us to want justice the wrong way. So we fall for the bait. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if the children of Israel in Egypt would have took up arms against the Egyptians, they would have been totally destroyed. And, and because, now the reason why God allowed it to happen the way he did, it wasn't that the Egyptians needed to know who God was. God's people had forgot. God's people forgot who he was. There was a people living in Egypt that forgot who their God was. And so God was not proving. Remember the Bible says that God actually hardened Pharaoh's heart so Pharaoh would be harder because God was going to prove that all of these statues and idols that y'all worshiping ain't God. But the only reason why I've allowed it is because my people don't know who the one true God is. Y'all there? So as you all see, we always have a Malcolm Martin spirit in this nation. We have those who want the nonviolence, and we have a younger generation that's ready to go to war, but they don't understand the war. They don't know that the reason why it has become so violent and murderous and they're murdering us the way they are doing is because they are losing. It doesn't look like they're losing because the media is on their side and the media is painting the picture, but they're losing. I'm going to tell you why they're losing. They're losing because they used to be able to do what they're doing and we said nothing. They used to get away with just, if you remember, think back of all the police shootings you heard of and you just accepted the narrative. When they said, got police shot to do, oh, well, he must have been doing something wrong. And we leave it at that and we go on. Now we're questioning based upon, and they don't like the questioning. Now that we are questioning, we're starting to awaken, and the, and the awakening is happening and causing us not only to awaken, but to begin to make certain demands. The demands are going to infringe upon white privilege. And the, and the reason why they are turned to violence is always the last resort of a desperate people. Listen to what I'm saying. Violence is the last resort of a desperate people. Because the way control works, say control. control. That's what slavery is, say control. control. The way control works is first manipulation. I don't have to force you if I can trick you. Manipulate. That's how they work first. That's what we've been under. Years of false, uh, of, 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 um, of uh, uh, false education, lying about education, lying about history. Manipulating. The second level, if manipulation wears off and it doesn't work, it's intimidation. Where no longer can we trick you, we'll scare you. So we'll use terror. We'll use different things to cause you to be so fearful that you'll stay in control. If, 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 if intimidation doesn't work, then we'll use domination, which is violence. I got it, son. Don't worry about it. I got it. Domination is violence. So if you see violence, then we are at the dominating stage. But it only is, has escalated to that because they're losing. They're losing. When Pharaoh lost the children of Israel, what did he do? He said, get the chariots. We're going to kill them. We don't want them to be slaves. We want to kill them now. Violence is the last result of a people who know they're going to lose you. 
Losing you, they lose favor. Losing you, they lose your labor. Y'all, does anybody want to talk about this or not? I'm trying to show y'all why this is happening. It's not because nobody, nobody wants violence when they are winning. Because violence messes up your peace. Violence, we used to say this in the world when we used to be out there doing wrong, that uh, drama kills money. So nobody wants drama because drama kills money. But we only want drama if it's the last resort. So this is the last result, and that's why they're at resort, and that's why they have went to this level. Now, black people don't know that, so we're still running around talking about we shall overcome. Marching like we in the 60s, instead of getting prepared to, to rule. I told, now, I, 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 can y'all handle this? See, I'm not teaching gloom and doom and it's over for us. I'm telling you that the only reason why this nation is the way it is is because it's losing. The Indians are raised up. In Dakota, the Indians are raised up. The Mexicans have raised up. Everybody's talking about the atrocities of the white man. And whenever all these people are coming, they in a corner, and the only thing a person in a corner would do is violence. So we're really not losing. There's such a fear. Look how one man that played ain't even the best football player. Ain't even, I didn't even hear, I didn't know he existed. Until he wouldn't stand up for the anthem. That's the only time I knew he existed. But one man, just one, not two, one man, show you the power, has started a movement that all the athletic teams, pro, college, high school, middle school, are all picking up the spirit of protest from one black man or colored man That's proof. That's proof of the greatness of a people. Amen. That it doesn't take a lot of us. This one man with conviction. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. So, what God is doing is He is trying to get His people to understand His strategy. Say strategy. First of all, we must stop joining with everybody. See, I've been hearing this thing where, see, they just want us to riot, and then because they just want martial law. See, that's going, they just going to use that for martial law. This is what they're saying. And I'm saying, well, if, 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 if the rioting is going to lead to martial law, why don't y'all talk about the police and the white people as far as getting shot? If it wasn't shooting us, wouldn't be no riot. But that's not the logic. The logic is, y'all going to cross force martial law with the riot. No, the shooting us without justice is what's going to cause us to riot. Which is going to cause more, because we no longer say it. If you look at the news now, these brothers ain't talking about go home and be at peace no more. They talking about we going to stay out here and we not going to tell our people to calm down. Because we tried Martin Luther King and y'all killed that man for being nonviolent. And notice how they keep saying violence don't solve nothing, but y'all don't listen till something catch on fire. Now, do you think they would have charged that white lady, that killed, the police that killed that man in Tulsa if, them, if Charlotte didn't go up in flames? They, they, it's a psychological thing to tell you this don't matter, but that's what really does matter. Amen. Are y'all there? Amen. Now the problem here, let me show you. It sounds good the Malcolm X way. Because y'all know we got two ways in this nation. 
We got Martin and we got Malcolm. And, and surprising to both of you all, both ways are wrong. Because even though Martin was seen to be nonviolent, the spirit that was behind the leadership of the civil rights movement took the focus from us and brought in everybody else's cause. That's why instead of it being black rights, it became civil rights because everybody can get in on civil rights. But not everybody had the struggle or the grievances that we had. So we needed specific rights. But the people who funded Martin Luther King, which anytime they fund your movement, they push their agenda. That's why we have this homosexual agenda. Because the goal was always to bring this homosexual spirit movement under the guise of civil rights. So if you understand football, I'll show you how this works. You, do you know what the running back is? Everybody should know what a running back, that's one of the most famous positions on the team. The run, say running back. You know the running back, no matter how good he is, he needs somebody to block for him and to clear a path for him to run. So the, so the job of the offensive line the big dudes on, in the front, is to, is to move the oppo opposing team and give a path or a lane so the runner can run in. So the good runners know how to run behind the offensive line till they make a hole. You got what I'm saying? Once they make a hole, the running back breaks out. Because he know now my speed, because I've gotten through the blockers, my speed can carry me the rest of the way. Well, see, what you don't realize is we have been every movement's offensive line. And the homosexuals got behind the black movement. And we blocked for them. And they was moving up as we blocking. But then once we made a hole, forget you Negroes. And they took off. Notice they don't come out and march with us for nothing. The feminist movement took the black, black, took the black civil rights and went right on behind it until they got to the point to where they buy. And then where are we at? We back there still saying what we shall overcome. People have used us to overcome, but we haven't overcome. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So say strategy. So this is what the prophetic word is. You ready for prophetic? I'll give it to you right here. You ready for it? God is trying to get his people to understand his strategy. You know, in Ezekiel, I talked this a while back. You know, in Ezekiel, when the Bible says that there was an army, uh, 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 Ezekiel 37, I believe, there's an army that stood up, an exceeding great army. But the army had no breath, but it just was standing. Well, that's where we are. We're standing. Everybody's awake, but don't know which way to go or what to do because they're not being, because what do they need to wait on? The spirit. They're not being led by the spirit. All they're doing is just coming up with good eyes. See, when, see when, if you're standing up as an army and you ain't got no, you ain't got no um, spirit-led vision, then anybody can come and say, well, why don't you march for women? Why don't you march for men? March for domestic violence. Get Susan Cohen and march for her. March, you know, what? anything you can, you, they can interject anything because all you guys are empty slate. You're an empty army with no vision. If you don't believe me, go on Black Lives Matter website and look at what they stand for. There's really nothing they standing for. So, and so that's like a that's like a uh, that's like a, a a blank slate movement. Anybody with an agenda can come and add their name to it and say, "Let's march for this." So yet, so say strategy. I heard everybody asking for. Strategy and solution. And you need to hear this. Say hear this. 
especially you young people. Y'all need to hear this because you are going to fight this war one way or the other. You're going to fight this war, amen? Us older folks, most of us are set in our ways. Some of us have lived long enough for Christ, we'll die for Christ. It's just the way it is. You have never lived until you've decided that. That's what frees you in this life. That's why the Bible says, death, where is your sting? And, 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 and as long as you are afraid of that, then the control or the terror is working against you. That's the reason why Christians uh, can't fight because they, they, they worried about the rapture and they scared of, they want to escape because they scared of death. They scared of the antichrist. They scared of having to lay their life down. And that's why they're very ineffective now. They're literally marginalized. All in rapture folks are marginalized. Them rapture folks are hiding in the church, hiding, scared to death because they're marginalized. Those that have already decided that I may have to lay my life down, they are the ones winning souls. They are the ones that's, that's preaching the gospel and being fearless and see, until you have made your peace with that, you're not ready to live. And I'll tell you another thing, you won't even enjoy the little life you do got. You can't live in fear of death. You won't be able to enjoy it. Now you're there. Now, so let's go with the say strategy. strategy. Are y'all getting something out of this? Amen. I want to help you. What's going on? I, I get so tired of our people. I, 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 I'm starting to loathe social media. I hate it because it's just like a, a venue for idiots. Any idiot can voice any idiotic opinion. I just hate it. I just get so frustrated. And I don't like to chime in because then I'll be getting in and I, I, I don't even want y'all to know what I think all the time. Like, I don't even want you to know what I think. I think you an idiot. I think this is idiotic and this is stupid. And it's so frustrating because we have a generation that's okay with being stupid. It's they okay with idiot, being, being ignorant. Are y'all there? So... Because I want people to understand what's going on, I'm going to give you this word right here. Amen? Amen. Are y'all Exodus? You, you'll very seldom find a preacher that's preaching a prophetic right now word. I'm trying to get you to look at the news and know, okay, I see what's going on. You ain't fooling me. I want you to be able to do that. I want you to listen to the idiotic conversation in the beauty shop and the barber shop and know what's going on. I want you to go to college and listen to these ignorant professors and know this is foolishness. Because their other people's philosophy will shape your worldview. And if you don't understand the, what the truth is, and the truth is a vein, vein, it's a vein. And you stay in that vein. And you'll lose a lot of people staying in that vein. But in order for you to stay in the truth, you have to stay in, the, you have to stay in that vein. Are y'all there? And so what I'm trying to do for some of you all who are outside the truth, I'm trying to connect you back with the vein of truth. So you'll begin to stop, so you'll begin to detox from your foolishness. Believe in foolish stuff. Because your number one problem is you believe you can keep sinning and end up with a good life. The only reason why you, your life is all right now is because you young and your sin ain't accumulated enough. But, but there is a day called payday. When this truth I'm talking about, you will understand. And most of the people that, that are my age and 
uh, maybe a little younger, they're dealing with payday. That's why everybody's crazy right now. Everybody's nuts right now. Because the, 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 the devils they was playing with their whole life have matured in their life. The strongholds are there now. So the, the first vein of truth is stop believing you can live any way you want to and your life's going to come out good. The only thing, listen to me, that will help reset or realign a crooked life is wisdom. Wisdom has a way of, but see, fools don't listen to wisdom. Because wisdom is foolishness to a fool. So what your prayer should be is help me to want wisdom. Uh, let, don't let me get off. I'm getting, I can get off and crush y'all the way I feel. I could just crush you right there. But I want to help you because you're never going to, like, Lord help me, you're never going to achieve success in sin. And remember I told you the problem with the children of Israel, it wasn't that they were in Egypt. It was that Egypt was in them. So it's, no, it's not so much as, 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 as getting out of America. It's getting America out of us. Getting its customs, its fornication customs. Telling you you got to go and live your life and go and sin to you 30 and 35 before you get married. Come on, this is what America telling you. Telling you birth control is abortion and stuff. That's, see, that's America's custom that everybody need one pill or two and weed ain't harmful. And turning up is just something we do. So you got to understand that this sin, this American way, I'll tell you the American way that's messing you up now. Most of y'all was taught that you're supposed to go in debt. That's the American way. That's the American way. You go to college and borrow money to get a paper saying you know something. Then you go get a job to pay back the money from the, from the knowledge they gave you for the paper. The only reason you need, wanted a job to get money was to get a house. That's the only reason you want money, really, to get a house. That's the only thing worth buying, right? But you go to school to get a good job to get the paper so you can go get, a, to get the house. But then there are dudes who just say, let me cut out this and go get a house. I told my son them. I said, look, y'all done beat all these college cats. You beat them. Because y'all already got a house. Y'all got a house, y'all already got a car. Y'all got a business that I gave you. Y'all hit everybody. But the wisdom of this world is telling you, go get in debt. Y'all there? So you watch movies and videos and listen to music that promotes materialism so you'll go to live above your means. So instead of you getting a car that you could have bought with your taxes that was just a right little car to ride in, you had to keep up with these cats and finance it. Finance it with full coverage. Amen. Remember that. Amen. You know, everybody think about the payment, but don't remember it's the full coverage that adds an extra two, three. You didn't add, you didn't add that in. So now you out here working. You got a car so you could go to work. But now you're working for the car. You got a job to move out of your mama's house to get your own place. But now you're working for the house. You're working to live her. That's what you're doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
But this is the American way. Now, I told my sons, some of y'all, even some of my spiritual sons, I was telling them years ago, I said, I've always had an unconventional attitude when it comes to money. Some of it has to do with drug dealing. I've had big money in my life, so I knew it's possible to get money. When I, when, 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 when I, when I came to the Lord, I told my wife when we first got married, I said, uh, my wife was already ready to go the American way. We're going to do what we got to go get the financing. Get, you know how you do the credit and go do that. I said, no, nah, ain't, ain't the way we gonna, ain't way God going to do it for us. I said, it's going to be different. So we're going to have to wait. It's going to take some time. We're going to have to be patient. We're going to have to let everybody shine and bling and live and live. But, but, and we're going to just be the turtle every day. And they're going to be sprinting. They're going to be looking good and driving good and living good. And then around 30, 35, all they stuff going to catch up with them. And then we just going to be at that point where we cruising, see, because we, we, was, we was okay with y'all talking about us on this level. And we was okay with you not having. And we taught, listen, y'all, we taught our children this, le this lesson to the point that they are so immaterial, it's frightening. I have to force them to want stuff. I'm serious. I have to force them. I have to literally, man, let me buy you something. I have to force them to want stuff because they wasn't raised, they wasn't raised that way. Are y'all there? So I told my wife, I said, by the time we 40, we'll have, we'll have, we'll have what, see, see, I was understanding down the road. Wealth is down the road. Wealth ain't this niggerish stuff where you get it up front. Wealth is down the road. I said, by the time we 40, We'll have it all, and we'll have it with no debt. So, no, I don't live in a $300,000 house. No, I don't. But the house I got is paid for. Paid for. Don't owe, don't owe nothing. Don't owe a dime. Just pay taxes, and that's it. But everybody was blinging and having, okay, but we don't owe nothing. So I can get sick. I could take off work for months. Because what are you really working for? But because we have been taught this American way, then we, the American way is to work, but not to enjoy. It's just to work. So they will give you work. You'll never enjoy it. You know who be enjoying stuff? These welfare cats. They home blowing trees. <laughs> now, I don't believe in that concept, but I do believe in fixing my life that I work less. Not that I don't work, but I'm working so I don't work. And there's no way to do that without, I don't even know how I got on this, this is a whole different message. There's no way to do that without a stream of income that you control. And there's no stream you can control except a business. Because nobody can control how much you make. So you need some level of income. Come on, this is prophetic too for you. That's why I told y'all, I don't understand, you know, and nothing's going to change. I see, see, one of the things that I see coming is a black boycott, you know, where we're ready to just boycott everything. But see, the problem with a black boycott is there's not enough black people to spend the money with. So if I say have a black boycott and I say I ain't spending no money on nothing, then I ain't spending no money with no other people except my own people because then they're going to respect us once we do that. Then how am I going to buy groceries? I ain't got no black grocery store. Ain't no black shoe store. Ain't no black, see, I got to spend my money somewhere. And so the problem is somebody's got to learn to build businesses so, we, so when a black boycott come, we can spend our money with each other. I saw this, the Lord, I don't know why I'm even talking about this. I saw this, uh, on, it was in Maryland, there was a, a couple, she, she wrote a book, 
and uh, she wrote a book, uh, some about buying black. And she did, so for one year, her family and her husband and her and her family, they, uh, they only bought everything they needed from black businesses. She said it was so hard because she had to ride for miles and miles to find black business. She said, I couldn't find a black grocery store for nothing. And she said, you'd be surprised how lack of business it is in our community. So if we did want to boycott, what would we do with, what, where would we buy our stuff from? So see, what should be is if I did boycott, I should be able to go to you and you got clothes and you got shoes and you got food and you got this and we create and then and get to the point that you know what even if it's weak dollar system falls I don't even need that because I can just trade with you that's a whole nother teaching but that was for somebody stop allowing the fact that nobody in your family own the business and you think you can't your problem when you start a business is going to be your family don't go to them don't go to them for support they won't support you till it work when it work they i just knew oh i just knew the lord was with you yeah when it work or they'll support if you hook them up and they're gonna don't go to them know that your stuff is so good that you can go to the world and make money. You ain't got to go to them. Sell it to the world. If you're good enough, but see the problem with us is we so sloppy and slouchy and we, you know, if I'm just keeping it real, that's my word, slouchy. Yeah, slouchy. You take your car to one of these bootleg, jackleg, Nick Road mechanics and he got 80 cars over and he jump off your car and fix on this car, fix on this car and break your car and leave a, leave a boat off and door handles falling off and he but he's talking about see we don't never support each other if we want to support do excellent business don't be braiding my hair have my hair all missing just because just because you black and you braid on my hair is missing girl you got my hair all word but you think because you black I'm supposed to just that's how we think though now do good business fix up your establishment Make your stuff look like something. I tell y'all to be honest, the best, the, the big, keep it all the way 100. The best food in the city is Big Mama. Some of the best food I've I'm keeping the real, I'm a connoisseur of food. The girl got good food. The girl got good flavor food, good food. But it looked like you going in a juke joint. It looks like a juke joint. You don't want to go down there because you're going to stand outside and say, oh, in line. And, and even though we making all that money, Negroes won't put no money in nothing. But yet we won't, yeah, yeah. So if you do good business, people will support you. But don't do bad business and then expect, just because you black. You know how Obama just came out and said, well, y'all black, y'all, I want for y'all to help me with my legacy. Just because you black. Negro, please. Do something for us. That's just like a Negro. I'm going to tell you to support me. I ain't done nothing for you. So you do good business. Lord, I'm trying to get into this. I'm trying to get done. Are y'all there? Ain't nothing worse than trying to patronize your people and they do, and you got to overlook. You know how you got to overlook stuff like, well, she's trying. We shouldn't have to say that. You are in a marketplace of competition and you should be competing. Right? You should be competing. I, 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 was, I was getting my car fixed yesterday, uh, was putting some tires on, I was across the street and I was looking at guys that was cutting the grass along John Silver and there was two black guys and, and I'm sitting there looking at them, doing the weeding, cutting the grass and I said, they look like they just got come out right off the corner drinking, you know, got the long t-shirts down there and shorts down, you know, I'm like, they don't look like they want to work, they don't even look professional. Right. Now, now, now see, if, if, now, now, let's say I was sitting there saying, I, I won't, I won't, uh, uh, looking for a lawn care service for my business or my, my house, you know, and I'm, I wouldn't even go over and talk to them. Because I, I know I'm going to get what they look like. But if I looked over and brothers had, had their shirts tucked in and work pants on and work boots and clean and hat on and looking, you know, name on the shirt, then, oh, okay. Then I can talk to these brothers. 
See, you hire these Negroes, they ain't got no word or address to even go file a report or nothing. See, y'all got to understand that, now nah, I'm, 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 y'all ain't gonna mess with me on this. See, this, this is part of it, this is part of it. That we always complain about, we don't stick together, but then when somebody do patronize it, you don't do good, you be cooking. Look, somebody be baking, and you know, they, they well, I could cook good cakes. Yeah, but you might cook good cakes, but then you put the cake in a, in, in, you know, just throw it in Reynolds wrap. Right. And bring it out, the, 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 the bottom is, is, is ashy and hard on the bottom, the icing is all messed up, and you don't care, but I made it. It tastes good, so what? We have to learn to do good business. And then when, and, and when you do, and when something go wrong, you know how we don't pass the bottom. Right. I was already right there. I don't, I, you know, I, I, I'm keeping it real. I, I took my car to the car wash, you know, the car wash, you go through the automatic, and I shouldn't have did it because these rims shouldn't have did it. And the, the automatic thing kicked in and bent my rim. And I came out. And just put the tires on there and just got out of the car and saw it. And I went in the place and told the man, and he said, It's our fault. We're going to straighten this out. If we can't fix it, we'll buy you some new ones. Come Monday. Now, let that have been a Negro. Man, man, you know, you bet he's trying to play for some Man, he, he, he came in there with that. See, I had to argue and fight him over that. Because we don't stand behind. We don't hold ourselves accountable. But yet we want to, y'all ain't ready for this. It's, 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 it's for enough people. It's just for free people. I take, I preach this to y'all when y'all get to Canaan. Right now, y'all need to. Let me get y'all out. Look at this. Uh, uh, Exodus 2, real quick. Exodus 2. Let me get done. Oh, I'm good, bro. I got some right here. Thank you. Come on, say do good business. Do good business. You brothers getting out of prison with records, that's the, you, that's the greatest thing you can do is start your own business. I don't, I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand it. Start your own. I'm waiting for somebody to go get a haircut license. We should have our own barbershop in the church. See, we don't think that way. I, I, don't, I don't understand why we don't think that way. If we're going to change stuff, we have to be able to spend our money with our people. Amen. All right, look at this. Now, Exodus, I want to show y'all. Say, come out, of Egypt. come out of Egypt. Look at verse 11, Exodus chapter 2. Y'all there? Yes. And when it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out unto his brothers and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew, one of his brothers. And he looked this way and that way. And when he saw there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. This is how we feel. This is where we are. Right, right. This is the strategy that we're trying to operate in. This is what Satan is pushing us to. Can't get justice. I tell y'all what, we'll do it this way. You know that Micah Johnson, even though that was fake. The one, the Dallas shooting, that was fake. The police, that was fake. The one in Baton Rouge was real. What was that boy's name in Baton Rouge? He was real. But that's what Satan is pushing us to. Just getting tired. I tell y'all, well, we'll take the law in our hand. We'll just do it this way. But that is the strategy of Pharaoh. Because he will destroy you. That's what he wants you to do. Because then he can take the restraint off of himself and kill you for real and then put you back where he wants you to be because you cannot dominate. The reason why America's way is because America's got a military that they ain't even got to fight you. They'll just see, you'll be, you know, them little drones, you'll just see little drones over your house. They don't even have to fight you. See, that's not the strategy. Talk back to me. See, when you keep seeing these murders, you get mad. It's anger, it's pain and anger. And it makes you say, man, you want, and then you see them riding, and you see they just ready to, you know, brother just ready to 
go off and, and that's what they want you to do. Notice that every time they do that, the camera, they put the camera right on these Negroes. They, 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 they beating up white people. They, they trying to fight white people. They, they acting a fool. Why? They want to do that because this violence is going to give them a license to do what they really want to do. Which is to come in the black community with martial law and just lock Negroes up in FEMA camps. That's what they want to do. So that's why I'm telling you, even though that is a noble idea, that's not the strategy of the Lord. See, Moses, that's what Moses thought. Moses thought, I'll tell you what, I'll just kill, I'll start killing. Well, Moses, it did, you can't kill everybody, Moses. Well, you're only going to get one. And then how bad would it be been somebody like Moses go to jail when he's the leader? Y'all there? So the Most High was trying to get Moses to understand, Moses, I got a strategy. But you can't get it because you in Egypt. I got to get you out of Egypt by yourself so you will detox, take off Pharaoh's rings and all of his food and all of his wisdom and his mindset and get you by yourself so you can, I can begin to teach you my ways. So the goal is to get you out of Egypt. So no matter, so listen to me, no matter how me, well meaning we are, as long as we won't detox and get out of Egypt, and what is Egypt? It's the mindsets, the mentality, the ways the, this world does things, the way America does, as long as you think that way, as long as you home receiving from basketball wives and hip hop whores and all that, that's you in Egypt. You in Egypt. As long as you pandering and twerking and dabbing and all, you, you in Egypt. When Pharaoh turned, when Pharaoh put the camera on you and they see you just dab, oh, they, they ain't going nowhere. Our program is working. We got to dab this year, next year, week, let's come out with something more niggerish. And, and when we see them doing this niggerish stuff, program working. We got them up here, program working. Oh, he got his pants right here, our oh, program working program we ain't got to worry about them see as long as Egypt is in you you can't have a that's why I said people want solutions you can't have a solution because Egypt's in you I can flip it you want to be married but singles in you you can't be married with single in you See when, see, when you married, you save yourself for your spouse. So if you want to be married, you should be saving yourself. So in order to get you married, we got to get single out. So do you want a solution? Do you want to be married? Well, then... But, but see, people say, yeah, but then they got to give up single. Right. And see, I want to be married, but I didn't think I had to give up nothing. I thought you just going to add Mary. No, you got to give up something. Oh, y'all don't want to talk now. You want a job? You got to give up lazy. See, any, any time you want something, Two things cannot occupy the same space, so whatever's already there has to be given up. Y'all there? So Moses' mentality was, uh, I'll kill. This is it's the strategy. Y'all ready? And when he went out the second day to show you, just to show you, to show you, did y'all notice that it wasn't even the people, you know, the Prince of Egypt, they lied. That's a lying movie. You know, they lied about it. Yeah. It wasn't the Egyptians that knew what Moses did. It was the Negroes that he did it for. It was, you got to understand strategy. In order to help our people, you must understand our people. Our people, are, most of them are double agents. They've been trained to turn on you. 
Your people will never get our way on your side unless they know you definitely going to win. If it's any thought you might lose, they will turn on you. You don't believe me. Look at how many people hate the team that wins the Super Bowl in the beginning of the year. But as you get to the end of the year, everybody starts to like the winning team. Because we always only want to be on the winning team. And if we're on the wrong team, we'll jump ship just so we can say we're on the winning team. So Moses got a rude awakening that not everybody's going to be grateful. That's why I ain't going out there marching and killing nobody for you niggas. I won't do it. Because even after all the marching and killing I done done, ask Nat Turner. All this marching and killing, there, somebody will still be sitting back. We should have done that. even did that in the first place. I don't know why he did that. Who, who called him to do that? And a lot of good, listen to them, a lot of good leaders get killed or die prematurely because they got that Moses mentality that I'll just do it this way and don't worry on the strategy of the Lord. And so the reason why none of our leaders can help us is because they full of Egypt. When Moses saw his people being oppressed, he did the Egyptian thing. He went into violence. That's what Egyptians do. That's the way of America. He went right into the Egyptian thing. But that's not how God delivers his people. Y'all there? God don't need a sword to deliver his people. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Come on, listen, listen to him. Let me go. Let me go. I got to get, get to go. Look, and, and, and when he went out on the second day, behold, two Hebrews fighting together. Ain't that our people? Two Negroes is fighting, like we always do. Online, talking about, see, I'm comedic, man, and you 5% God and earth, and I'm, you know, Hebrew, Israelite, and you, I'm a Christian. See, we just fighting, just fighting the fight, just fight. Just, just a, we are just contrary for the sake of it. Just, 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 you, don't have a, you have a whole timeline of agreement, and somebody got to come on there and just say something for no reason. So this is our people. This is how you identify who we are. So the Hebrews are striving against each other, fighting. And he said, and Moses said unto them that did wrong, Wherefore, why are you fighting your brother? Why are you killing the brothers in Chicago? Why, why, ain't that what they say? Ain't that why y'all killing each other? Now, if I want to tell y'all, you know they bring up black on black crime, I'll tell y'all why. Because they learned it from Egypt. We learned about this murder from the mafia. They glorified the mafia and made the mafia seem honorable. And so we picked that up because they glorified it. Black people did not know what gangs were until they showed us what gangs were. So the way we're treating our brother and sister is the way Egypt has treated us. There's a direct correlation between the way you beat your kids and slavery. Because we were hard, we were, it, we were that curse of abusing our children comes from slavery. And it passes down because there's a difference between discipline and abuse. But while the slave master was beating us, he was saying he's not sparing the rock, quoting the scripture. And so, we're, so the, when the slave got free and disciplined his own child, he used the same punishment and beat his child instead of understanding how to discipline and then and when the master beat the slave he never came and explained why he did it he just walked away that's how we whoop our own children we whoop them and never talk to them we don't they don't even know why they're getting a whooping 
It's a curse. So what you see when they want to keep talking about black on black crime, it was learned from a country that genocided the Indians, from a country that would cut the foot off a black man, cut a pregnant woman's belly open and let a baby fall out. This is what they did. They taught us violence. So is there any wonder when we get free, we're still psychologically messed up in the mind? that we are still violent towards each other. So when they bring up black on black crime, just tell them you taught it to us. You taught me how to kill my brother. Y'all there? Let me get done. Okay, let me get done. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Listen, I'm trying to help y'all. Can I help y'all? Y'all don't even want prophetic words. Y'all just want, y'all, y'all don't even want this stuff, man. I get so frustrated. Y'all don't even want this type of word. Now, y'all want me to talk about y'all relationships, how hard y'all broke, y'all broke hard and all that stuff. Then get over that, man. Get, get healed up. This, we need you in the war. Look at this. And he says, uh, uh, and, and he said, who made thee a prince? <laughs> black people. This is black people. This is us. Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me as thou did the killers the Egyptian? Ain't, that's, our, that's our people, man. I can't. That's why y'all should know who our people is. I keep telling y'all who we are. This is our people. Because only we come up with this type of stuff. Amen. You ain't my daddy. You ain't know who you think, who you, think you are. That's how we are. Now, notice, listen now. Now notice that when Moses took out running, they didn't know, the Egyptians didn't know what he did. But he knew his people. <laughs> These Negroes were going to talk about this enough that they're going to overhear what he did. Because one thing our people can't do, and that's why we can't come up, we can't be quiet. We cannot be quiet. You don't believe this, but... Did y'all know that that's sown, they sold that into our race? Yeah. Yeah. That it was a law that uh, three or more blacks could not congregate except in church. Because yeah. they was always afraid of us getting together. And so that's sown in us. And anytime you notice how when we're trying to come together, black people go over and grab a uh, uh, homosexual and come in and bring them in. And, Bring, you know, let's, let's be for the Asians. Let's be, we, we'll go get anybody. We won't be for us. We won't be for each other. So Moses understood, my people are going to tell this. See, this is why I say, say strategy. Now look at this. And, 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 and so he feared, for he feared, surely this thing is known. Now, when Pharaoh heard this, he sought to slay Moses. He only knew because Moses ran. Moses took out running. And he's in Pharaoh's house. So when they call, when Pharaoh called his people, Moses don't show up. He's like, where Moses? Right. Oh, Moses didn't kill somebody. Matter of fact, he killed an Egyptian. And now when Pharaoh heard this thing, he saw Moses to slay Moses. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian and sat down by a well. And this is the first instance where Moses is, is about ready to get, is starting to detox from Egypt. Y'all there? He's starting to understand it's the mentality that I learned from Pharaoh that's going to keep me from understanding who God really is. So he's beginning to understand I got a detox. Y'all there? Now I don't want to. I don't want to get too deep in the rest of this. Turn over real quick to this real quick chapter three, and I'll be done. Exodus three. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Quick, quick, quick. I'm over my, my, my time. You should be receiving not just prophetically for our nation, but also for you. You should see why you can't get where you need to get. It's until you detox from Egypt. Y'all there? Look at verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro. So now God is wise enough to get Moses in his occupation. 
And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And this is when the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And the Lord saw that he turned aside. Now look, y'all see that? And when the Lord saw, he turned aside. Did y'all see that? That means God didn't say, come on. See, God don't do what y'all think. God ain't out there like that. God just said, here's the bush. Now let's see what you're going to do. Because it it's very important that you're ready. Because see, let, let, let me help you. I got close. Listen. There are times in your life you walk right past a burning bush. It didn't, it, it, you wasn't ready for it. You wasn't ready for it. But then, there, but then there are times in your life you looking. So you go through enough on the other side that you looking for that bush. And so the reason why God didn't say, come on Moses, is because Moses had to be aware. Say aware. Because God was about ready to give Moses the strategy. But Moses had to be mature enough. Say amen. amen. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, and God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. Now he said, once Moses turned, come here, Moses. And he said, here I am. And he said, draw, draw not nigh hither, but put off thy shoes, off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Imagine Moses in Egypt, seeing all the gods of Egypt. He finally saw the true and living God. And the Lord said, I surely, and the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. I know. It's not that I don't see it. I don't have a man that would do what I'm telling him to do so I can get the glory. I don't need a movement. I just need a man. Every man I get starts a movement. Notice Moses never started a movement. He just went by himself with her and that was it. I just need a man. Because the more people, you get the glory. But when you just listen to me, I'm going to get the glory. Come on, say strategy. That's why I can't follow this stuff going on. I can't hook with none of these leaders because I know you don't have the correct strategy. You want me to tell you why? Because everybody's screaming, let's get together. Let's get together. The unity, that's not the right strategy. Because I can't unify yes. with folks that don't believe in the God I'm following. Yes. It sounds good that we got the same cause. Yes. And my blackness is not my cause. Because if my blackness is my cause, then I can hook up with black Muslims. And I can hook up with black comedic brothers. And I can hook up with black voodoo people. And I can hook up with black witches. The problem is not my blackness. The problem is sin. So if I hook up with people that are okay with Egypt and Egypt's sin... Then they're going to get me killed. So my foundation must be correct with who I join myself to. For the Bible says, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? So do you want to know why the movements that we have do not work? Because the foundation of the people are not together. No, I don't mean that the people are coming together. I mean they don't believe the same thing. So it would be better to have a small group that believes God 
than to have a lot of people who believe everything. Because when we stand before Pharaoh, the God of the Bible got to show up. You can't be calling on Allah. And you can't be calling on confusion and, and Oprah's God and the New Age God and the Hindu God. You can't be calling on Baal, Molech, and fornicate and Jezebel. You got to know what God we going to stand and call on. Because if we stand before Pharaoh, if you talk me into going to Pharaoh, like that's why Moses didn't want to go. If you talk me into going to Pharaoh, you better show, we better have some power because Pharaoh will kill you. So that's why Martin Luther King died. Because he had mixed Egypt into his philosophy. His name was Biner Rustin. The philosophy of Martin Luther King came from a homosexual called Biner, Bay, Bayard, Bayard Rustin. They had to put him out, of the, get him away from Martin Luther King because J. Edgar Hoover found out and said, I will expose you. And so he kicked Biner Rustin out. But the philosophy of the nonviolence and don't hurt nobody and all of that came from this guy. Because the beginning of the civil rights was always to push homosexual rights. And that's why we can't come up because we are mixed. It's like at the root we are mixed with this. Because we're marching with folks that do not have the correct foundation. So the strategy of God is not to gather a lot of people because if you really want to, if you want, I can prove this just by taking you to Gideon. God sifted folks. Gideon had 30,000 men. And God said, no, no, I'm going to show you, uh-uh. The devil need numbers. But I'm God. Bring them down. I'll sift them where you only end up with 300. And I'll give you the victory over thousands with 300. Because God's way ain't unity. The unity that the Bible speaks of is the unity of the brothers. Those of us who believe the same thing, he said, make them one as me and you are one. But we ain't supposed to be unified with every other movement. Y'all ain't ready. I know y'all done. Y'all done. Y'all don't want this. So that's why I'm trying to tell y'all why this stuff don't work. Because when I go to march with Black Lives Matter, and I talk about what's your core philosophy, and they talking about to raise up the LGBT and quit. But that's, you're going against, you're going against, listen, the God I serve says that's an abomination. If I agree with that, it's going to short circuit the power I need to stand in front of Pharaoh. Listen. So when I go out there marching under your banner, my God won't show up. So I'm out there on my own like Martin Luther King with no protection. Because I done added this new age philosophy to the foundation of the gospel. So what is the strategy, y'all? What's the strategy? Listen to me. What strategy? The gospel. It's the gospel. You can't make a, a hating white supremacist that's been this way for 50 years love me. But what can do it? The gospel. It, me running out there hugging on him ain't going to make him love me. But this preaching has a way of piercing the heart of men. So what should be preceding us is not a movement or even a philosophy. It should be the gospel. And that's the banner we march under. That's the only banner that won't fail. And that's why I will never, by the grace of God, get with this stuff until they put the gospel at the forefront. Because without the gospel being at the forefront, it's not real. No movement is real without the gospel of Jesus. The Bible says, Jesus said, will I be lifted up? Yes. We're trying to draw men before Christ is lifted. 
it's the gospel that draws men. Which the Bible says, be careful when they talk about peace and safety. When they start talking about unity and coming together, beware. Jesus said, I did not come to bring unity or peace, but I really came to bring division. So when a move of God is happening, it's not everybody. It's a remnant of people. And then those remnant lift up Christ to the utmost that that draws. And those people don't, are not drawn to that with Buddha philosophy or Krishna philosophy or Muhammad philosophy. They draw to that based on lifting up of the Lamb of God. And that movement will work. And that's why I haven't seen any movement that has worked. Even our civil rights with Martin Luther King, it didn't work. Because what was he talking about? He was talking about civil rights. Wasn't talking about the gospel that would have changed the hearts of men. Nothing changed the heart of men like the gospel. Nothing. Nothing can change a heart. You can give them all the money in the world. You can give them all the incentive in the world. You can't make them love you. Only the gospel. So this was what Moses was being taught by God. Moses was training, God was training Moses to tell my people the good news. What was the good news? That there's a God in heaven that loves you, that will deliver you, that will save you. That was the foundation. And when Moses got that, God said, you ready? Go. Go tell Pharaoh what I said. And the strategy, I ain't got to know the rest. I just got to know that. Once he stood there, the strategy came. Stand on your feet. Come on, say the gospel. Nothing changes the heart of men but the gospel of Jesus Christ. As, as, the, as the days get darker, I get, I'm getting more and more. I want to, it's like I'm, I'm understanding more and more the power of the gospel. Amen. Amen. And I'm realizing that's what's keeping me from deception. It's keeping me safe. There's nothing like it. You can't make no man love you without the gospel in his heart. It's the gospel that makes a man love. The Bible says he who is forgiven of much love much. The only reason I'm able to really give my wife love because I can pull on the fact that, of the forgiveness that God has given me. And because I have been forgiven of much, I love much. If you find people that have not been forgiven, or they, they, they would not love. But it's the gospel that gave me the understanding that I could be forgiven. Nothing will make anybody love you. Nothing going to make anybody not hate you. Hate is normal. It's normal for humans. That's we're normal. That's, what, that's when we are in our normality, believe it or not. What is abnormal? Love is abnormal. Love is not usual. Love is not normal. So with, without the gospel that sheds love in a person's heart, you can't love anybody. So I'm not running out there with that stuff. I'm not, you ain't catching me up with that stuff. I'm going to save my breath. And I'm going to connect with those that want to walk in his, in his word and want to really walk with God. And that's where change comes from. So I would encourage you today. Do you have the gospel in your heart? 